Now at Wedgeby there was a cocking, you see, a match between Newton and Scroggins. Now the colliers and the nailers left work, and all to old Spittle, Spittle kept the blue ball at Wensbury, went jogging. To see this noble sport, many noble men resorted, and though they'd little of money, well, with that they freely sported. There was Jeffries, an old born from Hampton, and old Dusty from Bilston was there. Plummer had come from Darleston, and he was as rude as a bear. Mole will he come from Warsaw, I and Smacker from West Brom, come a blind. Robin he come from Rowley, but staggering he went wum. Well, old Moe come hobbling along as though he some cripple was mocking. To join in the blackguard in throngs was met at the Wedgbury cocking. He'd borrowed a trifle of money to pack old Taverner's grey laid fourpence, ate me to fourpence, lost and went broken away. But he soon returned to the pit, for he'd borrowed a trifle more money. And he's placed another large bet along with old Blobbermouth Coney. But as Coney demanded his money, as is common on all such occasions, he cried, Bless thee if I don't owe thy peace, well I'll pay you as Paul paid the Ephesians. I and Scroggins' breeches were made of nankeen, you see, and they'd worn very thin in the groin. And while stooping to handle his cock, well his bollocks burst out behind, Besides, his shirt tail was be shit now. That caused among them much laughter. So Scroggins, he turned himself round in a pet and cried, Boogie, what's the matter? Well, the morning sport being over, old Spittler dinners proclaimed. Each man he should dine for a groat. If he didn't, he ought to be damned. For there was plenty of beef, but old Spittler, he swore by his trough that never a man should eat until he'd taken his noggin a broth. Now the beef was old and tough of a bull that was baited to death. And Barney Iron got a lump in his throat as was like to have stopped his breath. Well, the company fell in confusion as seen poor Barney Iron joke. So they carried him into the kitchen eye and held him over the smoke. But they held him so close to the fire he frizzled just like a beefsteak. So they threw him down on the floor as was like to have broken his neck. One gave him a kick in the stomach, another a kick on the brow. His wife said, throw him in the stable. He'll be better just now. And they all returned to the cockpit and the fight and went forward again. Six fights were fought on each side and the next to decide the main. For they were the famous cocks as ever the country spread. Old Scroggins a duckwing black eye and Newton's a shiftwing red. Well the fight was hard on both sides till old brassy wing black was a choked. The colliers were tarnationally vexed and the nailers were sorely provoked. Peter Stevens, he swore a great oath as old Scroggins had played his cock foul. So Scroggins, he gave him a kick eye and cried, God damn your soul. Aye, and the cockpit was close to the church, you see, an ornament unto the town. On one side was an old coal pit, and the other one was well gorsed round. Now Peter Adley, he hadn't paid to get in, peeped through the gorse, the better to see the cocks fight. So Spittle, he just jobbed his eye out with a fork and cried, Boogie, yeah, that serves you right. And the company fell in confusion and a bold fight did ensue. Kick, batter and bite was a word until the Warsaw men were subdued. Ralph Moody bit off a man's nose and wished he could have him slain. So they trampled the cocks to death, aye, and made a drawer of the main. Now some people may think this strange as Wensbury never knew, but those who have ever been there won't have the least doubt But it's true. For they are savage by nature and guilty of deeds most shocking. Jack Baker, he whacked his own feather. So ended Wedgbury cocking.